Hello everyone, and thank you for listening to this presentation. Today, I will be talking about IP Rainbow, which is joint work by myself, Max Carter, Mark Lewis, and Daniel Smithtone. In this talk, we will present a new variant of the Rainbow Signature Scheme. To start this presentation, we will review the UOV and Rainbow Signature Schemes. The Oil and Vinegar Scheme was first introduced by Pataran in 1997 after the break of Sea Star. Kipnis and Shamir were able to break this balanced oil and vinegar scheme and introduced the unbalanced oil and vinegar scheme, also known as UOV, in 1998. In UOV, our central map will be composed of polynomials that contain two types of variables. Specifically, we call these oil variables and vinegar variables. An input vector x will be of length n. So the first v elements are considered to be vinegar variables, and the remaining n minus v elements are oil variables. In the unbalanced oil and vinegar scheme, it is required that the number of vinegar variables is sufficiently larger than the number of oil variables. The public key is then computed by composing the central map F with linear maps U and T. Notice that although F is a quadratic map, F is linear on the oil variables. Therefore, inversion of the central map is completed by choosing random values in FQ for each of the vinegar variables. Then, in each equation is set equal to zero, and Gaussian elimination is used to solve for the remaining oil variables. And then if no solution is found, you're just gonna choose different values for the vinegar variables, and then repeat this process until you find a solution. Rainbow is an extension of the UOV signature scheme that consists of layers of the UOV central maps. Rainbow was first introduced by Ding and Schmidt in 2005 and was the only multivariate signature scheme to make it to the third round of the NIST standardization project. Recently, Rainbow has encountered substantial attacks, which we will discuss later in this talk. Each capital F represents a layer of UOV polynomials. So in each ascending layer, the number of vinegar variables, which is denoted V sub L for the Lth layer, will increase. This means that the dimension of the secret space O sub L, which is just the space spanned by the level L oil vectors, will get smaller. Each layer L will be composed of N minus V sub L equations, which is also the number of oil variables in that layer. In practice, we consider only two UOV layers. To invert the central map, we choose values for the first layer vinegar variables, which are the variables X1 through X V sub 1. And then we substitute these values into the first layer maps, which are the polynomials little f1 through f0 sub 1. Then we solve the resulting linear system in the first layer oil variables, which would be xv sub 1 plus 1 through xv2. Next, we substitute these values of the variables into the central maps, which would be fv plus 1 through fn. And solve similarly for the remaining variables, which would be x v2 plus 1 through xn. This picture illustrates the matrix representation of the rainbow polynomials. If we consider a vector x of length n, the first v sub i elements represent the vinegar variables, and the remaining elements make up the oil variables. Thus, when we consider the matrix representation of the UOV polynomials, we see that we have non-zero coefficients in the coordinates that would correspond to either a vinegar times a vinegar variable or an oil times a vinegar variable. The coordinates corresponding to the oil times oil terms will be zero, which are represented with the white in the matrices. Notice that there are less vinegar variables in level one than in level two, which corresponds to having more oil elements in level one. Despite the relatively large size of public keys associated with the rainbow scheme, its short signatures and high degree of computational efficiency and verification make it an attractive choice for many applications. But as we already talked about, there are these new attacks that have reduced the security of rainbow below their claimed NIST security levels, rendering the scheme significantly less efficient in order to bump up the parameters large enough to be effective against these attacks. So let's go ahead and look at those attacks. The first attack we will discuss is the rectangular min rank attack proposed by Ward Bulins in 2021. Min rank attacks are very effective against multivariate schemes, and the modeling of this min rank attack is more efficient than the previous attacks against Rainbow. We first consider a visual representation of the matrix representation of the central maps equations 
just stacked all on top of each other. So if you look at that cube, you can think about it as the central map matrices just stacked all on top of each other going from front to back. If we think about multiplying these matrices on the right by a vector in O2, where again, the white is representing zero coordinates and the gray is representing non-zero coordinates, we can see that we would be left with a matrix that only has non-zero elements that are denoted in that last matrix, in that last rectangle, with that small gray box. Thus, if we can find a linear combination of the public key equations, such that the rank of the linear combination is less than or equal to O2, then it's probable that we found a vector Y that is in the second layer oil space. So this instance of the min rank problem requires n minus O2 plus one different n by m matrices with a target rank of O2. This attack weakened the complexity rainbow, but the next attack, called the simple attack, lowered the security even further. I will only briefly go over the simple attack as Ward is gonna be presenting on this in this conference. So before we discuss the simple attack, we're gonna first introduce the concept of a discrete differential. So if we have a function p, we can define the discrete differential as p of x plus y minus p of x minus p of y plus p of zero, which in our case is gonna be zero. Notice that we will depress the degree of the original function p, but it's also going to add a variable. So if p is a quadratic function, p prime will now be a bilinear function. It is also important to understand the structure of nested subspaces involved in the rainbow public key. The top line gives us a sequence of nested subspaces within the input space, fq to the n, and we see that the layer two oil space is a subspace of the layer one oil space, which is all a subspace of fq to the n. We know that if we were to evaluate the public key at a point in the layer two oil space, that would be equal to zero. And if you wanna visualize that, you can visualize our block matrices with only non-zero coordinates in the bottom of the X vectors. All the vectors in the layer two oil space will be mapped to a vector space of dimension O2. And so we're gonna call that space W. From analysis in Bulin's 2021 paper, which was improved cryptanalysis of U of V and rainbow, we know that if we have a vector Y in O2, then P prime of X, Y is gonna be in W for any vector X. This information is used in the simple attack and that's what we're gonna be describing next. The attack goes as follows. First, we're gonna fix a random X in FQ to the N, and then we're gonna define the linear function D sub X of Y, which is equal to the discrete differential of P with a fixed value of X. And then we know that for any non-zero X and for any Y in O2, d of x of y is going to be in that space w. So this leads to the strategy of guessing a random vector x and trying to find the solution to the system of equations d sub x of y is equal to zero and p of y is equal to zero. If we can find such a y, then it's likely that y is in O2. If we cannot find such a y, you're just gonna choose a different x and repeat the process. So our question would be, how likely is it that we could find such a y? So if we restrict our domain of d sub x of y um, to only vectors y and o2, we see that d sub x is gonna be a linear map from, o, from capital O2 to w, where w has dimension lowercase o2. Therefore, we can express d sub x restricted to uppercase o2 as a lowercase o2 by o2 matrix. So for a fixed x, the probability that there exists a non-trivial kernel vector y in O2, such that d sub x of y is equal to zero, is the same probability that a random O2 by O2 matrix is singular. So we have the probability of what that would be, but for large Q, this is gonna be approximately one over Q or Q to the negative one. Once you're able to find a vector y that is in O2, you can complete the attack, um, which Ward will be talking about in his presentation. This attack breaks the rainbow one parameters quite efficiently. Um, and this technique can also be used in conjunction with the rectangular min rank. And that is what is really used, that combined technique 
um, for higher security parameters such as um, the level three and level five parameters. Because of this, we were interested in seeing if there was a way to repair Rainbow through modifiers. Specifically, we're considering applying the internal perturbation, or IP modifier, introduced by Ding in 2004 to the Rainbow scheme. When we add an IP modifier, we are going to choose a vector of length m, which we will call q. So q is composed of m quadratic functions. Then we will apply the IP modifier by adding the functions in Q to the original central maps in F. The support of Q is S. So to define IP rainbow, we're gonna keep the layer one central maps the same and then internally perturb the second layer maps. So specifically, we will consider an internally perturbed second layer homogeneous equation of the form normal layer two central map plus quadratic map concerning S layer two variables. The reason this is an interesting modifier to consider is that if you're given an unmodified rainbow public key, you know that for any X in FQ to the N, such that T of X is in O2, then P of X, so the public key evaluated at X, is gonna be equal to zero. And we use that fact when setting up our system of equations in the simple attack. Now, given the IP modifier, the O2 space is not a subspace of the kernel. In fact, an O2 vector is in the kernel of Q with probability approximately one over Q to the S. This is a visual representation of what the IP rainbow maps would look like, um, the matrix representation. So once again, we see that the white would represent zero coordinates and that the purple will represent non-zero coordinates. So just like before in the layer one map, nothing there has changed. In the layer two map, we now have a small S by S block within those oil by oil coordinates that will now be non-zero. The inversion process is similar to the process for rainbow. So one is gonna randomly assign values to the first layer vinegar variables, which are gonna be the variables X1 through X V sub one. And then it uses the first layer maps to solve for the first layer oil variables. So that would be X V sub one plus one through X V sub two. To invert the second layer maps, they're evaluated at x sub one through x v sub two to recover O2 equations in O2 variables. These equations are quadratic. However, only S variables occur in the quadratic terms because that is the support of our IP modifier. Thus, by Gaussian elimination, we may recover a system of S quadratic equations and S variables whose resolution by standard Grobner basis techniques allows for the remaining variables to be linearly solved. The simple attack remains applicable to IP rainbow, but with some changes. For our new IP rainbow scheme, an oil vector in the kernel of D sub X may not necessarily be in the kernel of the public key. So given that the second layer maps contain a quadratic summand in S of the second layer oil variables, we expect the simple attack to proceed with probability roughly Q to the negative S minus one or one over Q to the S plus one. This is the lemma that appears in our paper and the corresponding proof is also found in the paper. So as is the case with rainbow, the simple attack can be combined with the rectangular min rank attack um, for IP rainbow. As the attack still involves finding a second layer oil variable and uses the property that a vector satisfies the public equations, P of Y equals zero, we find that the complexity of the combined rectangular min rank attack costs about Q to the S times more for IP rainbow than for just unmodified rainbow. So you can see what the complexity of the enhanced rectangular min rank attack will look like. The complexity of the signing procedure is dominated by the complexity of the Grobner basis algorithm used to solve the S quadratic terms introduced in the IP modifier. Since the security of rainbow is exponential in S with a base Q, we're gonna choose Q to be equal to 257 so that S can remain small for the fastest inversion. Here are the level one parameters, and now I will show you the level three parameters. So in these tables, we compare IP rainbow with comparable UOV security levels to observe their key sizes, signing time, and verification time. What we see is that the larger the value chosen for S, 
the smaller the key sizes and signature sizes needed to attain the security level, but the longer the signing time. Some of these parameters mentioned would be such a long signing time that it would even disqualify them for applications using offline signing. But it does seem that better implementation could make the relationship between key size and verification time tighter. So as we have shown, the implementation of the IP modifier on Rainbow adds solid theoretical protection from these new attacks, but the IP modifier also adds significant increase on the complexity of inversion. The next step for future work is optimizing this construction and also determining the market for such a product. Here are our references. These slides will be posted so you can see them there. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email is at the bottom of the page. Thank you very much and have a nice day.